The first time we see Drew is at the dinner table playing dominoes. Auntie Janet is back. She got her son bronze with her. Monet's getting a text from Kane. And right now, they're just trying to figure out what the hell is going on. And if, if, Yes, I said it. If they're going to go to the wedding. Well, right now, no one's really trying to fuck with that wedding. But Jen is like, man, and me and Bronson flew up here. I got this bomb ass dress and I'm looking for the niggas. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for those. You know what I mean? She's trying to get her sexy red on. She's looking for the niggas like me up there. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I just pop up to weddings. I don't even know who wedding it is. I just pop up. Who you know? I'm Uncle Charlie's son. Uncle Charlie, I ain't know he had a son. Yeah, I'm the bastard child that don't know why you know it's him. I'm his oldest son. You know what I mean? He don't, you know, he don't really talk to me too much, but yeah, we cool. We on a first name basis. But Drew sitting here, he's sipping on his yak. Drew just like me, man. In the sense of us like getting our drink on. No other, no other way of me and Drew comparable. But they sitting here, he drinking, he like, man, fuck all that. I'm definitely not trying to go to no damn, no wedding. But Janet wants them to go. So they're convinced to have to go. And they end up having Drew hit the block. Now, we know about Diana. Diana's with Tariq, and she's supposed to be at the school taking a test. But she's leaving the school because she feels uncomfortable about, feels uncomfortable about taking a test or even being there taking a test. She's always thinking about the streets. But when Drew shows up, he got that new infinity. Let me tell you, that mug is clean, too. These knuckleheads that were assigned to him through Don Carter are out here just chilling, playing around. They got a cooler out here. They got a four-wheeler. They just popping their shit. Drew shows up, and Drew like, man, what the, what, what you what y'all think is doing, man? They're like, oh, we just chilling. What you doing here? You know, what you mean, what am I doing? I'm here to collect this money. They're like, well, surprise, you ain't going up there to Staten Island. What they what's the old boy name? Trevor, Travis, uh Thompson, uh Tavares, uh what's another name? Tommy. Man, we who who, who they send up there? Tawik? I knew you was gonna let that nigga in. Tariq? We raised you better than that, Diana. Drew's like, man, what the fuck you talking about, Tawik? They're like, man, up to Staten Island. Drew pull his gun out. Like, man, what you talking about? Drew, like. Drew is different. This ain't the same Drew we knew in season one, two, and three. Remember, we knew a nigga. Mm, mm, mm. You remember that? Mm. This the, 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 the Drew we used to know, this nigga used to have a boyfriend. That nigga Drew said, I kissed the boy and I liked it. Excuse me, Drew? That's not the lyrics. I think the lyrics are, I kissed the girl and I liked it. Oh, my bad. That was the remix. Nigga, there ain't, there ain't no remix, nigga. What are you talking about a remix? Ain't no guy. We just on, that's a Diddy remix, nigga. I ain't never. That's not no official remix, nigga. I ain't never heard that one. Don't do that shit no more. This ain't the same Drew that we used to know. Somebody that I used to know. This ain't that same Drew. You remember the one that was crying over Everett going to Oklahoma? That ain't that Drew no more. This Drew here is different. Say something slick, pistol. Say something he don't like, pistol. Do something he don't like, pistol. Breathe the wrong air, pistol. Make a jokey joke, pistol. Take the bottle from him, pistol. This Drew is different. He don't give a damn who you are, where you're from, what you about. This nigga pulled a gun out talking about <laughs> what you know man look my bad man i'm just trying to say up in staten island there's some drugs up there they said there's a new drug dealer they sent Tariq st patrick up there i don't know why don carter didn't send you up there Drew's like man what the fuck <laughs> why who said hey <laughs> don't throw my name in that bs i'm just saying i'm just saying i'm just saying i'm just saying he was throwing out names Tree Wick, you know what I mean? I didn't even know my dog Trill was in here. But Drew didn't pull the Thule out. 
Drew is standing on business. This is what you call standing on business. But when he leaves, he's starting to realize, he's like, is Don Carter pushing me out and bringing Tariq into the operation? Not knowing that all they're really doing, Drew is still in the good graces of Don Carter. Right now, Drew, not the family, Drew is still in the good graces of Don Carter. They're just trying to set Tariq up and get him up out of here. Nah, I don't I don't know if Drew would get a spin-off just for the simple fact. I think he's he's going back into Broadway. Like Drew, I think his name is Lavelle. Laval, Laval, so Lavelle, I think it's Lavelle. He he acts, he be on Broadway. So he like this brother be doing his thing for real, for real. That's why I'm glad they gave him some character development. The first couple of seasons, we're like, man, Drew really don't have a story. So I don't know if Drew's going to have a spinoff. As far as the Power Universe, he might still do something with 50, but I don't know if he's going to still be like in the Power Universe. But then they have the dinner, and Drew doesn't really expose too much. Drew is just sitting there really just drinking the whole time. <laughs> Drew just sitting around. What's going on, y'all? What's up, Mozzie? How you been? How you been? Drew in there. This is how Drew in there. You mean you got this penthouse at the bar? <laughs> yeah, okay. This nigga lying. Oh, what you say your name was? Anya? Yeah, my name. My name Drew. You know what I'm saying? I'm your local player. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've been doing my thing. Came supposed to be marrying your mom or something like that. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah. I'm single and shit. What you on? Type shit. Type shit? Type shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Penthouse is me and his. Yeah, he tried to kick me out, but the only thing is he don't really own this motherfucker. My mom do. I hear your mom in the family business. My mom in the family business. What you about to do after this? I like girls now. You know, I like girls, 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 girls. I do adore. So Drew over here, he trying to get it on you. Y'all wasn't watching the director cut. Drew trying to get it on you on the low. Drew was over there. He was looking at Anya. He like, damn, okay, she's straight. Now Drew ain't got no haircut. Now, if you ain't got no hair cut, you gotta wear a hat. Like I ain't got my hair washed or twisted, and like it'll be well, it's two weeks now. But I get that shit done next week, every three weeks. But yeah, I gotta wear a hat because the shit ain't looking right right now. But Drew, he like fuck it, man. When you get that little liquor confidence, Drew don't give a damn. So Drew looking at Anya talking about what's going on. You know what I mean? You what? What did he say? You call your friends, and I call my friends, and maybe we could be friends. So all this goes down, and we know that Drew and Kane, they end up getting into it. But at the bachelor party, this is where we fucking realize that uh, Drew, so what they're doing right now, I don't know if you guys are peeping it, 
what they're doing right now is building everyone's exit strategy. Ex exit strategy. We got Effie getting accepted into college. We hear uh, Diana saying when she's in the street, she's thinking about school. When she's on, uh, when she's in school, she's thinking about the streets. We also hear that Drew said there's an artist that is inviting him to come on out to Paris. We hear Kane talking about, I want to live for my legacy. I want to be immortalized. So everyone is showing like the route that they want to go on and how they're going to get up out of here. So while Drew and Diana, they're getting close, we get this phone call from Janet. And this is where we realize that Monet went to Staten Island where it was a setup by the Russians. So of course, like I said, we're doing Diana's story along with Drew's story. So these two have been sitting here and they've been close. And remember, at one point, Diana was the one actually manipulating Drew when the whole situation went down with Kate Egan and she went over there like, hey, Drew, let's set Monet up. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to drop this motherfucking letter off. And everything went to shit from there. So Drew and Diana, regardless of what they got going on, it's still their siblings. So they're like, all right, we're on the same thing. So when Janet says, hey, they going up to Staten Island. It's a 40-minute drive from Monet, and y'all are about 20 minutes behind. So if it's 40 minutes from Monet, if a train leaves Station A, headed 80 miles per hour to Station B, and there's a train leaving from Station C, headed to the same train station, which is 75 miles further away, going at 110 miles per hour, at what time would they need to leave Station C to get to station B at the same time station A gets there. So Monet is already 20 minutes headed to Staten Island. Drew and Diana, they just get word. So they're at least 20 to 30 minutes behind because they didn't get this call. Monet left straight from the crib, went to change clothes and head to Staten Island. They told me it's 40 minutes. So it took Monet 15 minutes to get home, 10 to 15 minutes to get changed. That's 30 minutes on the road. So that's a 30 minute head start Monet had. Monet actually left. She hit the Staten Island. They went over here from the crib to the bar. It's about a 20 minute ride, especially because they going into the city. Monet wasn't going into the city. They went into the city. That was 20 minutes on top of the 20 minutes that they were here. So Monet, 30 minutes before she actually left, 40 minutes for them. But they show up right after because they get the phone call from Janet. They got to head out there. But they don't leave right after they get the phone call from Janet. They get the phone call from Janet and Effie shows up. Once Effie shows up is when they start to piece together what the hell is actually going on. So while they're sitting here, Kane comes over to entertain them. Kane's talking about, ha y'all niggas need to drink up. Diana says, your mistress is here. Now, when Effie tells Kane that the Russians were going to Staten Island for who knows what, Chu and Diana, ding, a light bulb goes off in the dynamic dummy's head. These two were like, wait a minute. Tawik is up there. Monet is up there. And now Effie is telling us that the Russians are up there. So everyone's piecing together stuff. Drew got the information about Tawik. From the goddamn Goonies. Diana got the information about Monet from Auntie, uh, what's her name? Auntie Janet. And then Effie gave us the missing piece of the Russians. So they said, wait a minute, this ain't right. Two plus two is 19 tonight. So they hop in the car because they don't know what exactly is going on, but they know that they got to get up there. So I'm watching this. I'm like, wait a minute. So this is probably like an hour after Monet and dip. All right, they about to head up there. Now, Tamika told us that they got to take a ferry. I didn't know you had to take a ferry from New York City to Staten Island. There's a ferry in between the two. It's not like a bridge to Staten Island. Anyone from New York, is there a bridge to Staten Island or you have to take a ferry? Or do you have to go like the long way around or something? Like, how can you get to Staten Island? Just a ferry? That's the only way you can get over there? I, I don't know New York geographic like that. Not geographic. <laughs> geography. National geographic. <laughs> I don't know the New York geography like that. There's a bridge. Uh -huh. Okay. Now we're learning something. I would pull up Google Maps, but it ain't that important. So now we got the information that it seems like it's a setup. 
Now, we already know what happened with Tariq and Monet. They both send up here on a dummy mission. They run into each other. But now the Russians show up. Jayla said the Russians thought they were slick. Hey, <laughs> do you know how much they had to put in play for this to actually work? Don and Noma, all right, the common denominator is Tariq. So they were going to try to eliminate Monet and Tariq. That means they had to send a random person up here to put a, a lock in, you know what I'm saying, like a, a chain and lock around a random-ass door, told Tariq to go up there. What if Monet, what if Monet would have said, okay, I'm going to go up there and get that dope tomorrow, like during the daytime? Then what? What would we do then? Like, think about it. If you told me it's, it's 10 p.m., well, right now it is 12.28 a.m. for me. If you told me there's 100 bricks 40 minutes away from here, do you think I'm going over there right now? I'm not. I'm going to go over there probably tomorrow, and I'm probably going to bring like three, not, well, not three, probably like one person with me that I know I can trust. I'm not going over there right now to just go look at it. Oh, whoa, man, look at all the dope in here. Like, what am I going to do with it at 10, 30, 11 at night? But the plan worked. They knew Monet was thirsty for some bricks. And when they get there, the Russians are there. Ah, oh, Noma, uh-huh. We've been waiting for you. I've been waiting to do this for a long time. You've been fucking with your operation. See, you took my son away from me, and now I must take you and this nigga with you. Whoever this nigga is, he must die. Okay? No negotiations. Just must die, and everybody will be all right. See, no one tell me. She tell me you come out here because you think you're going to get the bricks from us. You don't get the bricks from us. We get the bricks from you. Now you must die. Then out of nowhere, you hear Drew say, hey. Psh, psh. He turned around like, huh? Pop, pop, pop. You and Diana, the dynamic dummies, they popped up. Bah, bah, bah. They lay him down. Too much talking. Remember, villains, too much talking. If you're going to get it in, get it in. <laughs> Drew and Diana, they catch their bodies. And then we know about the torching of the vehicles, Tariq's plan, because now they got to lay low for a little bit. Drew and Diana also show up. They show up to the damn motel to talk to Monet. This is where we find out that they all in, man. They supporting Monet no matter what. You know, it's family time. We got to make something happen. And that's all that matters. <laughs> We're with you, Ma. And Monet's like, all right, bad. Let's go talk to Tariq. But they come up with the plan, and we know once they do this plan, Drew is talking about we got to go get Darren Carter. Now, they should have sent Drew after Darren Carter since he knows Drew would actually had a better chance of setting up Darren Carter than anybody. Hey, Darren Carter, I need to meet with you. This and this is going on with the guys. You know what I mean? The plan would have worked better if Drew would have called Darren Carter and said, hey, Darren Carter, can you meet me over here? One of these guys are stealing her. You know what I'm saying? They ain't brought the money in. Can you meet up with me? And then Don Carter would have showed up by himself. And then, boom, we got him from there. You know what I'm saying? We could have had him meet us at like an abandoned spot already. Why would we kidnap him at the church when Drew has a direct, a direct line of communication with Don Carter? You know what I mean? Like, think about it. Hey, Don, what you doing? No, no, no. I need you to meet up with me right now. Like, no, right now. 
No, nah, one of the guy, one of the workers, they was, there's some bullshit. I need you meal right now. They they tripping. No, no, bet, 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 bet. Meet up at 2024 Spreewell Drive. Okay, okay, bet. All right, bet. Yeah, yeah, y'all better get in line. Like that would have been a better plan. At least we can get Don Carter right now. It's not like Noma has information within the police station or the police force of what Don has going on. She's up under Don Carter. So we should have got Don Carter first, be a Drew, and then we worry about Noma. Let this little marriage go on, and we can catch Noma at the crib by herself. When Noma got like one or two security guards, you just ask Kane, hey, Kane, what y'all doing this week? And then we get Noma next. It's not like Noma's been moving around with 1,900 security guards this whole season. It's just been now for the wedding that she got this much security. <laughs> Jayla said, recapping the episode makes Monet's death sadder because she got back good with the family. And that's what I'm saying. When we were watching it, I wasn't expecting Monet. I was thinking if Monet would go out, it would be in the, the finale. But she was basically making up with all of her kids. Every time we seen her talking to him, she was getting in closer with him. Like, we even seen a family hug. Man, we ain't seen Monet hug, man, nobody except for Ramirez. <laughs> Ramirez. Now, while this goes on, we know about the plan. So we'll throw Davis' story in, too. Davis takes one of the guys who's talking about, man, we've been trying to get in touch with Bottom. Bottom, the Russian mobster. So he picks him up like, hey, man, come on, ro roll with me because Noma's in a bad mood. So while they're riding, Davis is acting all nervous. When did, they, when did Davis start becoming this, like, man, they made Davis weak as hell. Davis is acting all nervous like he ain't catch a body 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So when they get here, Davis, I ain't going to lie, Davis been working out. So Davis pull a Tuli on him and pulls a Tariq move. Too close, not paying attention, knocks the gun out of his hand. Now Davis starts choking him out. You see Davis was flexing through the suit. I'm like, damn, this nigga been in the gym for real, for real. I need to get back in there. But it's, it's after September 1st. I don't be hitting the gym like that. But... Best believe me, once March 1st come, we get back to cutting. We got to drop back down to 180. Right now, we about 192-ish, 195 on a good day. You feel me? But then we cut back down, back down to like 180. You know what I'm saying? Between March and September 1st, we stay, brother, we stay around 180. You know what I mean? You got to stay physically fit. But Davis ends up choking this nigga out. I can't breathe, nigga. Y'all my back me out. And then... After Davis chokes him out, why is Davis looking like this? Davis, you got out the car with a gun to kill this guy. What are you looking like that after you choked him out? Davis, you had a gun, bro. You was going to kill this guy. And now Davis is looking around like. And, <laughs> but I give him credit, though. He didn't freeze up too long. He didn't freeze up too long. And then he drove, <laughs> he drove this nigga out into the woods. Now, you got to take him, like, all the way out to the gun line. All the way out to, the, the, to those trees over there. Because people will just walk over here. You know, most bodies that are found out in the wilderness like this, is some white guy walking with his Labrador off the leash, throwing the ball in the woods, and the dog goes over there and discovers the body. Wait, that's a hound dog. But yeah, that's normally how these bodies are found out in the woods. Just some random white guy walking off the trail. Da -de -de -la -de -da. Man, this is a skull. The dog be over there. The dog will bring like a bone. He's like, wait a minute, what is that? If my dog brings me a bone from out of the woods, I'm not going in the woods to find what the fuck this bone came from. I'm a, I mean, I mean, get that out your mouth. Knock the shit out of my dog's mouth. We're going to continue on about what we was doing. 
But David drags him out into the woods, man. From there, we got Drew and Diana. They do show up at the wedding. They got all the security, most security than Obama's. And that was the body for Davis. Forgot about that. Can't forget about the body for Davis. Monet. Louise. So they trying to get in here. I ain't gonna lie to you. That dress Diana got. Hey, someone, what, what, what dress is that that Diana got on? That's nice right there. That's right, right. That, hey, that that dress that Diana got on. That's nice right there. You know, y'all tell me what dress that is. In one lucky lady. I'm going to buy that for one lucky lady. We're going to go out. We'll get us some eating. We're going to get us some drinking. And make sure you don't sweat in it because I'm going to return it the next day. But we're going to go, whoever whoever can tell me what that dress is, I'm going to go buy that dress for a lucky lady. We're going to go out eat. We're going to go out and drink. Have us a nice little town on the town. There's actually a rooftop bar out in Frankfurt. We're going to go out there. And the next day, we're going to return that dress. That's a one-time only dress. You can't wear that dress multiple times. We might as well turn it back in. We might as well turn it back in. Don't sweat. Make sure you wear. Make sure you wear clear deodorant. Don't wear the white deodorant because that's all black right there. That white deodorant is gonna show. <laughs> clear deodorant, please. And wear drawers. Don't be trying to be cute. Wear no drawers. Put some drawers on up under there. We gotta turn this in tomorrow. Now we gotta turn it in tomorrow. Oh, yeah, tag still. It's going to be itching the back of your neck a little bit, but tag is still going to be on there. You best to believe it. You feel me? Oh, no, no, no. Y'all not going to fly. I'm not buying the dress for y'all. I'm saying y'all find me what dress it is. I'm going to buy the dress, and then somebody over here, I'm going to take them to Frankfurt. We'll go out and enjoy our time, and then I'm going to turn the dress back in. See, I'm the type of nigga... That likes to uh, shower you with gifts. The only problem is the water that I use, <laughs> just like the water in real life, <laughs> it goes through the water cycle. I let it rain. I let it out. It rains, and then it turns into condensation, goes back up into, you know what I'm saying, it turns into, or condensation, it evaporates, it goes back up into the clouds, and it comes right back around. That means you wear that dress one time, you put that tag back on, we take it to the mall, and then we go back and buy something else. It's just a circle of life which moves us forward. It's a circle of life. Trying to help y'all out. I'm trying to put y'all up on game. I'm trying to put y'all up on game. You know what I mean? I'm trying to put you up on game. Lisa said, I knew a song was coming. If Lisa, she said, if I know one thing about Mo, if you give him an opportunity to lead into a song, then hey, find me that dress. I'm going to buy that dress, and you're going to see me buy it and turn it right back in. They go to the wedding. If you watch closely, did you see when Drew was clapping? Did you see when Drew was clapping and uh, Diana stopped him from clapping? <laughs> hey, Drew was over there like Diana said, hey, chill, 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 chill. There was some big ass zippers on that dress, though, man. I ain't know they were that big. <laughs> Monty said that's the most cheapest thing I've ever heard. Is it cheap, though? Is it cheap if I if I spend if I spend fifteen hundred dollars on a dress? Is that being is that cheap? Is a fifteen hundred dollar dress like a, a like a weekend dress cheap? Fifteen hundred dollars is that cheap? I think fifty. Me personally, the way I live, fifteen hundred dollars is expensive.
Fifteen hundred dollars is expensive to me, though. Man, all right, we I, I know we getting sidetracked. We're gonna go over four hours, but we don't care. Yes or no? Is fifteen hundred dollars expensive? I want yeses or noes. I don't want no numbers, no nothing. Is fifteen hundred dollars expensive to you? Like, can can you justify spending fifteen hundred dollars like right now on something? Yes or no? Fifteen hundred dollars to me is expensive. Anything over, to be honest, to, for me, anything over two hundred dollars is expensive. I consider that expensive in my book. But the wedding was low key born, but it, you know it's professional. I guess you don't want. I guess they didn't want to go overboard for the wedding because ice is there, but. Ice was there, and they wilding out and at the goddamn uh, reception. So we get the reception cracking. Drew and Diana in here, and they getting escorted out. That's what I'm saying. I, I know I fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred is expensive. Mozzie said, uh, <laughs> "Hence you're getting your money back." The problem is you got to have the money to spend though. In order to in order for fifteen hundred to be expensive. You had to have fifteen hundred to spend. Now, if I like, let's just let's just use this as a scenario. If I buy this dress for this one evening, for this particular evening, then yeah, I got to take it back. You know what I mean? Because if if buying a dress for fifteen hundred dollars and taking it back to get my fifteen hundred dollars is cheap. Then if you rent a rental car, you're a cheap bastard. I don't want to, I don't want to have to say this. If you ever rented a car in your life, you are a cheap bastard. Drive your own car. Put your mouths on your own car. Don't rent no car. Don't be a cheap bastard. Get your raggedy car fixed and go drive your own car. Don't rent no car because you got to take that back, right? Yeah, I'm renting the dress for the day to have a good old time. When, when I get married, am I buying the tuxedo? Hell no, I'm renting that motherfucker, taking that bitch back. When I get this dress for you, be taking that bitch back. We're going to wear it that one time. We're going to take that bitch back. I'm going to get my $1,500. I need that shit cash. Don't put it back on the car. Give me that shit cash money. Cash money. Auntie knows, hey, Auntie knows the kitchen. Auntie knows Mo's pocket ain't spending no fifteen hundred. I don't know outfit. Hey, uh, hell no, fifteen hundred. I had this woman I was talking to. She uh, she was telling me she gonna buy these Balenciaga shoes for like six fifty. I said six fifty. Man, I was at the Nike outlet uh, when my, my when my family was here. Man, I bought three pairs of shoes for one seventy. You out your mind? You think I'm paying six fifty for one pair of shoes? Excuse me, man. Negative. How did we even get on fifteen? Oh, we was talking about Diana's dress. Let me get folks. See, y'all y'all be throwing me off, man. We supposed to be on the clock. Where we at? There, we got thirty minutes already on Drew and Diana. Come on, man. Let me get right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Drew and Diana didn't have much going on here. We already talked about Kane. But Drew and Diana, they get kicked out with security along with Bronze. And that's because now we see Noma and her brother, they making it rain. These Nigerian weddings, that's where the money is at. They making it rain in the club. Who's in the club showing love? Hold on, give me give me a second. I'm I'm about to find. I'm about to show y'all what's going on. This is what it looked like in the club. Well, after this, we all know what happens. Monet goes out like a G. Drew and Diana show up. And they don't even help out. Monet goes out, guns blazing. 
Day after day. Damn. Damn. Cleo, fuck no hell. It's just so emotional, just, just knowing that Monet did all she could for her kids and seems like I push Damn. Can y'all blame Monet for going out like this? Drew and Diana didn't even try to help their mother. They just sat outside and let their mama go out. They just keep laughing. Damn. Mm, 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 mm. Jew and Diana, man. Jew and Diana. They did all they could, man. They did all they could. It just wasn't enough. When I get off of here, I'm going to go to my room. I'm going to pull up one more glass of Crown, and I'm going to put on Set It Off. I'm crying myself to sleep tonight, man. <laughs> 